Insulators are the second major component in a transmission line. Insulators are non-conductive devices that are used to separate or insulate the energized conductors from the other components in the line. Insulators come in a variety of shapes and sizes, depending on where or how they're used, and the amount of voltage they're rated to handle. Structures are the final component in a transmission line that we'll discuss. Structures are generally made of wood or metal and are used to support both the conductors and the insulators. Depending on where and how they are used in a system, structures can take the form of wooden poles, metal poles, or towers. Structures are constructed on a tract of land called a right-of-way. We'll discuss rights-of-way in more detail later on. In general, most of the components that make up transmission lines are larger than similar components found in other parts of a T&D system. The reason for this is due to the amount of power these components are rated to handle. Typically, the voltage applied to a transmission line is above 34,500 volts. The amount of voltage that a transmission line is designed to handle is one way of classifying transmission lines. To make things easier, Abbreviations are often used when referring to transmission voltages. For example, a 120,000 volt line is often referred to as a 120 kV line. kV is the abbreviation for kilovolt. Kilo means 1,000. So 120 kV is equal to 120,000 volts. Transmission lines are also classified as HV, high voltage, or EHV, extra high voltage. As a general rule, HV refers to transmission voltages up to 345,000 volts, or 345 kV. EHV, extra high voltage, is used to refer to lines with voltages above 345 kV. Transmission lines can be used to perform a variety of different jobs. In addition to linking switchyards to substations or other switchyards within a system, Transmission lines may also link switchyards of one company with switchyards of another company. This is generally referred to as a power grid. Earlier in your training, you learned that power grids, or power pools as they're often called, allow power companies to buy and sell power to each other. During times of peak demand in one area, it is often less expensive for the local utility to purchase power from another area where the demand is less. Power grids are extremely economical because they make it possible for a utility to buy and sell power, which is often more efficient than generating more power.